ما بو وبرو روح حي وخديش وحاضا له شرير امين the name of the father the son the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen brigh safro to all of you dear brothers and sisters good morning i'm very happy to be with you today to be all of us here to gather in the house of the lord to worship god together and to thank him and to be with him all the days of our life today we call it the sunday of the genealogy or lineage of jesus christ in this sunday which is the sunday right before christmas we read from book of matthew chapter 1 from 1 to 17. this reading it seems boring when we read it especially it has almost three times 14 three times 14 so almost how much 20, 42 names and we read it and these names a lot of it it's hard a lot of it even we don't know how to pronounce it so it looks like a little bit funny but meanwhile we have to understand that there is no single letter in the holy bible is written by coincidence or just because somebody called matthew he wake up one of the days he decide to write this name every single name has very important rule especially in the lineage or the genealogy of jesus christ in other words because of my father and my mother i'm here if my mother and father did not get married i won't be here so those names is very very important but what i want you really to know and to open your eyes for that this book we call the book of the life so all those names that written in this book especially in the genealogy of jesus christ it is big message for all of us those people we don't know where their tomb is they died thousands of years yet their name it's mentioned and we still read it every time we want to read the gospels every time we came to the sunday before christmas we read the name in other words the message is for you and for me if you believe in jesus if you believe in the savior even you will die one day but your name is written up in the book of the life i was reading yesterday a true story about a student in the university he was studi studying in one of the university in egypt in cairo but his parents lives in one of the villages maybe one or two hours away so this guy this is true story by the way so one of the days this guy he decided to go to attend there was a spiritual revival in church nearby him so he decided to go to attend this spiritual event while the lecture was given there was some word touched this person's heart and he was crying all the time and he decided after he finished that was friday next day he was supposed to go to his parents to visit them and saturday at night he will go to the church to confess and to give his life to god totally so next day he took the micro bus or i don't know transportation that take maybe 12 people the story says he took it going to his family and all in his mind after that spiritual lecture that changed his life he put in his mind he want to go to the priest to confess to give his life to god in his way to the village an accident happened to the bus that he was taking and the accident happened right next to branch from nile river we called here maybe creek but it was bigger a little bit and the guy he was injured 
and he was with all the people thrown in that river. So he was bleeding very badly, and he tried his best to save his life. But he was crying and screaming. He said, Lord, please give me just one more chance to come to you. And he was screaming, and he said, I was screaming, please give me one more chance, one more chance. Until he said, I began to see darkness, and I lost my conscience. Later on, the neighbor around, the people who saw the accident, they called the police, the emergency, the fire department. They came, tried to save people. They took all the people who found in the river, helping them. But in the hospital, the driver of the bus was conscious. So the police asked him, they say, how many people you were in the bus? He said, we were 12. So they count. He said, we only have 11. He said, you might made mistake, the number is 11. He said, no, I'm very sure we have 12 seats, and it was all full, so we had 12 people. So that police called the emergency who's still over there. He said, we have one person missing. Can you please look for him? So they began to look. They went farther until they found him between the broken trees. He was covered by maybe grass or whatever in the river. So they took him. And they think he was dead. But anyway, they have to take him. They took him to the hospital. When they, he arrived, they saw a little bit pulse in his hand. So they did the emergency for him. Because he bleed a lot, so he need right away blood transfusion. So right away, they give him a lot of blood. They try to save him. And thank God, they did save his life couple days or he didn't know after how long he saw his parents around him so he asked am I on earth or in heaven so his mom she was crying she said no we are here with you on the earth and then he sleep couple days later he wake up he was much better doing much better health way so there was nurse next to him he asked him he asked the nurse he said, can you tell me the truth? Am I going to make it or not? He told him, no, you are good because we give you a lot of blood and that blood saved your life. So this person, he was smiling. So the nurse asked him, why are you smiling? There is nothing to smile for. He said, not the blood that you gave me saved my life, my body, but the blood that Jesus shed on the cross he actually gave me the true spiritual life because I was, according to the word, I was alive, but spiritually I was dead. But now I thank God. I'm spiritually alive and I don't care if I will die or I will live. What happened to that person, it was big lesson to that person and he decided, to give his life totally to God. And this is what happened. And he become very good uh, person to serve in the church. And his life become very good testimony. What I want to say, especially today, we are doing the 40th memorial for our late sister, Jamila. And we read a lot of names in the Bible. The Lord telling every one of us, be careful and awake because what you have now in your hand every single second it's a gift from God to you because that person that I mentioned his story when he was about to die he was asking only one chance one opportunity from God he said please Lord just give me one more chance I don't want to be I don't want that this to be my last chance in my life. And also because you are here today, because you are listening to the sermon and to the mass, because you are here, the Lord is telling you to repent and to come to him. 
because our sister Jamila, she went normally to do some of the housework, but she didn't know that when she was coming back, it was last maybe hour or minute in her life. We thank God that she is a very good believer. We thank God for her husband and the family. We thank God because even we have very strong grave, we lost her, but we know very sure that her name is mentioned and written in the book of the life. Five days from now, we will celebrate Christmas, the birth of our Savior. And all these occasions, reading the names in the book of the life, and also celebrating the 40th memorial of our sister Jamila, and five days from now, birth of the Savior, King of the Kings, Lord of the Lord, I think all these occasions, it, it's calling you and inviting you and me to work very hard also to make sure that our names it's written in the book of the life but what can I do what can I do to ensure that my name is written there there is only one way and this way is through Jesus Christ the Lord himself he said in book of John chapter 1 he say but as many as received him to all those people who accept him it's a clear very clear message there is no I don't know what to say like compliment in this verse all those people who accept him as many as received him to them which is Jesus to them he gave the right he gave them the authority. He gave them the power to become a children of God. Who is those people? Am I talking about St. Ephraim, Virgin Mary? I'm talking about those holy people? Jesus continues saying to those who believe in his name. I think it's very easy as well as very hard to believe in him because believing in him it's not something you have it in your ID or in your skin color or you put tag on your maybe clothes no it is very strong decision following him day and night confessing your sins opening your heart to him receiving him so you can ensure your name also like those people that we don't care. Believe me, while I was reading the name, I had a hard time. You saw me. I made a lot of mistakes. Who's those names? Maybe in your heart you say, I don't care. You don't care. But the maker of heaven of earth, he cares about every individual and he cares about every single name to write it in his book, eternal book or book of the life. And I think this holy season, the season of Christmas, instead of we prepare a lot of food, clothes, decoration, gifts, we get maybe sometimes anxiety. We don't know what we're going to do, how we can please those people whom we love, but we forget Jesus. I think the Lord is inviting you to take this opportunity that, for God bid, might be the last chance for you and for me by the way I'm not trying to be uh, optimistic or negative person but I'm just trying to be person who really do care and love his spiritual children let's now after I finish when we are going to recite the prayer of compassion ask God is this my last chance to confess? If not, thank God for it. If yes, be ready to meet God. I pray from all my heart. I pray that in five days from now, we will have the birth of the Savior. But are you re ready to receive him in your heart? Are you ready to thank him 
for being a man for you. So you are the man. You can become also on his image and likeness. And in other words, God, if you don't know, you only need to believe in him, to open your heart to him, to confess and not regret for any something bad you had done in your history, in your past, rather with a broken heart, come to him, kneel down to him, before we will all kneel to him. This is what the Bible says, that every kneels will kneel to him and every tongue will confess in his name before that time will come. And we won't be able, we'll be ashamed if we won't believe in him and accept him now, then we will do it, but we're going to be broken doing it. But now, if we do it, we will do it over there as act of worship and love to our Savior and our King and our Master and our Lord of the Lords. So let's now please, all of us, ask God, because God has a plan for every one of you. God has a very unique ministry for every and each one of you. He has a very mystery plan for of you has been prepared from the beginning of creation. Number one, this plan that your name will be written in the book of the life. And number two, out of this love, you show your fruit to the world by confessing in Jesus Christ, the Savior. May God bless all of you and make you all and myself with you ready to receive the King of the Kings in our life and to confess in his name and to be his children, those people who accept him and believe in him. May God bless all of you and give you very beautiful, very blessed Christmas and New Year season and make you all ready whenever he will come I will tell him, Amen. I'm ready, Lord, for you. So may God bless all of you.